You're tuned in to Big Ideas Small Business with Doreen Milano. Doreen brings energy, focus, and creativity with the most cutting-edge tools and systems needed to grow business, drive profits, and achieve dreams. Ready to rise? Here's your host, Doreen Milano. Welcome to Big Ideas Small Business, and today we have the pleasure of talking to Miss Kathleen Copeland. And Kathleen is the person that I feel every commercial business owner yes. that has multifamily and, no, not multifamily. Oh, yes. Anything. It, anything. Pretty much anything um, within the commercial realm that is uh, held or purchased or uh, for investment. So she's the genius that keeps all these properties moving profitably. Yes. Right? Yes. yes. And so let's talk a little bit about your background and how you got into this particular niche because uh, it's yeah. kind of unique. <laughs> it is. It is. So we tell everybody we're consultants and advisors first. We're brokers second. So we're fully, fully licensed, but we do more than just being a traditional broker. Um, so you asked how I how I got into this. It was purely by accident. <laughs> it wasn't anything that um, we or I originally wanted as a career. Um, I actually started in real estate when I was 17, working for a family friend uh, on the weekends, a couple of nights a week, uh, trying to uh, make a little extra money for college. It was my intention to go to law school and to study law. And... Um, they, so did you go and study law? I, my first degree was English pre-law. Okay, so, okay. but I did not go to law school. Okay. <laughs> I tell everybody, uh, real estate found me, okay? <laughs> and, um, got and, derailed a little bit. Yes, got derailed just a little bit, but not really. I mean, it was, I, I truly believe now this was always what it was meant to be. Um, but um, that small family office ended up buying a Century 21 franchise. And they came to me and asked me to sell real estate for them. And I was like, no, that's, that's not what I'm going to do. But after a couple of years, and when they said, we could, what if we told you you could make enough money to pay for law school? And I said, oh, okay, now you have my attention. And that's how it all started. And um, after working for them for a couple of years, uh, we kept referring out our like, commercial um, calls. And I went to our broker and I said, why are we doing this? And he says, no one wants to do commercial. And I said, well, may I? And he's like, knock yourself out. And three years later, we had an entire commercial division within a residential brokerage. And that's how it all started. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. And I quit school. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It was a funny thing. I, I ended up quitting school, but it's I went back. Amazing I went what, back. What money does. It does. It yeah. does. It changes it, how you, it does. your perspective. It did. It did. And then when I realized how much there was within the commercial real estate realm, um, then I went back to school and actually got a degree, uh, finished the first grade, went back and got a degree in real estate, and then went on and got my MBA. So for our audience, can you kind of delineate more about the services that you offer and why it's so important to those commercial investors and the lenders? Yes, and that's a very good point that you brought up is, is the lenders. So that is a service that we provide that is kind of unique within this industry. Yeah. Our understanding of the, the capital side of things, the, the money side of things. So with most traditional brokers, you know, it's all about the transaction. Right. Let's get this transaction done. We are different in that I say we approach commercial real estate from a holistic W-H-O-L, holistic, because we look at the entire transaction, not just we're here to help you buy this property kind of thing. We're here to help you with every stage, every aspect of the transaction from the beginning to the closing and even beyond that, okay? Um, and so as you had referred earlier, we help moving, you know, help to make sure that these properties move forward even after the um, asset has been purchased. You know, how can it best be optimized? How can, they, how can they get the most money out of their investment that they've just made? So you've got a lot of people right now who are transitioning some of their spendable wealth mm -hmm. yes. into real estate. Yes, a lot of people. And so what, what kind of transactions do you help with? What kind of transactions are you not going to be able to help with? Because there's different yes, areas. Yes, there are. There are. So we don't do residential. 
with one exception, that's short-term rentals. So if somebody's looking at purchasing a home to be a short-term rental, that is real estate that's held purely for the purpose of generating income. So we can help it if they're wanting to live in like it. Like a VRBO. Yes, like a VRBO, Airbnb, Home Away, all of those things. Okay. Yeah, that's the one thing where we do, where we say residential. Now, some people consider multifamily residential. We consider it commercial. So if it's pretty much, if it's more than two units, it's commercial. And, you know, because one of those units, even if you live in one side, you know, the one that's being rented out, that it's is income. commercial. That's commercial. That's income producing. So that's the designation. It's income producing. So we can help them. With the purchase, we can help them with the sell. Um, we can help them to analyze why maybe it's not operating the way that it should. Uh, the best uh, best example I'd love to give is in regards to a referral that was sent to us was a father and son um, in Illinois because we work all across the United States. Um, they had had this office building for twenty some years, always had a waiting list, always up near one hundred percent occupancy. All of a sudden, they're sitting at 63% occupancy, and they're about to lose their largest tenant, which is going to drop them down to 30%. Ouch. Yes, ouch. That's a major ouch. <laughs> it's a major, yes. There is not going to be any revenue, you know, minimal revenue coming. So we were referred to them, and they think, they're like, great, 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 great. You guys are going to lease this up for us. And we were like, no, let's take a step back. We need to know why you have this problem. And they're just like, oh, well, because we don't have the time to, to market the, the space. And we're like, no, this, you know, we need to know the market elements. So we took a step back and we analyzed the property and the market and determined why they had this problem. And we're able to tell them, and they had no idea. They truly had no idea what they were doing, you know, what had happened, how their market had changed so dramatically in just five years to where they were no longer competitive. They were no, and they were competing against the university, which was in the adjacent town. And they didn't realize the university had created what's called an incubator for the um, graduates mm -hmm. who were graduating. And they did this purposely because they wanted the graduates to stay there and help build the community. And what they also didn't realize was that their tenants were actually these graduates, these startups, these IT startups. Oh my goodness. So now they had major competition with the university for their target market. Con their target market. Also what had happened within the market was that the adjacent properties, who used to be their competition, were aware of what was happening. They renovated their properties. This property had no renovation. So they were no longer truly competitive, yet they were asking rents were at, that were at the top of the market, which was why they were getting no phone calls, had no one on the list or anything. So then we told them what the problem was, and we gave them their options. And we were telling them, well, here are your options, and then we could help you, you know, guide you through those options and what was best for them. So when we're, when we're talking about those types of, of properties, markets continually change. Yes, and, and yeah, and can and change. Dramatically. And yes, they can change dramatically and very quickly. And the other side of what you're, you're telling us is that if you have a commercial property and it's not performing at the level you feel it needs to be performing, it might be a good idea to call your company. Correct, correct, yes, because you know, some people are, own real estate because that is all that they do. Other people own real estate because of the benefits for it, because it provides other streams of income, mm -hmm. yet they have another business that they're focused on. Right. And so, and was the case with this situation. The father and son had other businesses that they were focused on. So they don't realize what's happening. And they may not be in the market as much as we are, and even in understanding as much as, you know, what's happening on your block. Right. That can have such a dramatic. So yes, that's our clients are referred to us because they have some type of a problem. So that's that's usually, and that's how we get the majority of our business, and that's how we focus um, our approach to getting business. Is we're brought in when there's an issue. You wow. Know? Yeah, we're not. Uh, then it's, and again, that's something that designates us from being or separates us from the traditional brokers. Most brokers are out there. I always say knocking on doors, looking for listings, um, and we don't do that. We sell property, we get listings, but that's not our focus. That's not your focus. That's not our focus. Our so focus we're going to take a moment right here. Okay. Yeah. And we're going to focus on our our commercials, and we're going to take <laughs> some time, and we'll be right back. What is the role of American government anyway? Is the role of government to decide where I can go and where I can't? 
is the role of government to work tirelessly to destroy vital infrastructure that keeps goods and services from my customers? Is the role of government to choose who can drive, fly, or ride according to mandated stipulations that threaten my body, health, mind, and conscience? Without medical freedom legislation in place, our rights and freedoms are one vote away from being dissolved. Individually, change is improbable, but as an aggregate, attainable, it's time to act with one voice. My voice. And my voice. And my voice. And my voice. To protect our freedom, creating one voice that cannot be ignored. This requires your voice, too. Your voice, your feet, your vote, not just at the ballot box, but training to be a poll watcher, precinct chair, judge, or early ballot counter, so you are doing all you can to protect the fairly counted American vote. Move Freely America. Go to movefreelyamerica.org to find a chapter near you. Plug in, donate, and help our legislators defend our God-given rights under the Constitution. Move Freely America. Because my voice and my voice, together with your voice, we're one voice that cannot be ignored. Donate today. MoveFreelyAmerica.org. Interested in starting a podcast or TV show? Worried about what you'll say and how to keep it engaging? Think you'd like to be a guest on podcast, radio, or TV shows? Hi, I'm Susan Hamilton, owner and founder of OBBM Network, and I would like to invite you to an OBBM media training to get the tools you need for a relaxed and polished performance you'll be proud to share. Our specialized training techniques include role play, voice training, and everything you need to deliver a confident, clear, and engaging interaction. Go to offbeatbusiness.com. Go to the calendar and register for a training that's convenient for you. Dates available now, 214-714-0495. Team Building Strategies and Why They Matter. Brought to you by Visions to Excellence. Be aware of how you work. As the leader of your team, you must be extremely aware of your leadership style and techniques. Get to know the rest of your team. Make sure you have invested the time to understand how they think and what is required to motivate them to excel beyond what is expected. Clearly define roles and responsibilities. Each of your team members' responsibilities must be interconnected and dependent upon one another. Give feedback. This should be proactive and constant. The key is communication. Acknowledge and reward. Being genuine in your recognition and respect goes a long way towards building loyalty and trust. To learn more, visit visionstoexcellence.com. Thanks for watching. Welcome back. And we're talking to Kathleen Copeland. And boy, do I have a lot of things that we want to talk about. <laughs> yes, yeah. We could talk for a long time. We could. Yeah. <laughs> so the first thing is we understand that you help people with their commercial properties. Yes. That's number one. But you also work with banks and lenders yes. on non-performing Loans. Yes, that is correct. So can we define that a little bit more? Well, yes. And so it really depends on who you're talking to as to what is considered a non-performing loan. I like to use the word problem children <laughs> <laughs> because you can have a problem with a loan and it not be defaulted. Correct. Okay. Um, so it can be what's called slow performing or underperforming, or it just no longer fits the criteria for that particular lender at this point in time. So we do a couple of things with that. Um, we work with the lenders to identify potential risk. Yes, yes, because sometimes they, they, th these, the banks, a lot of the banks we work with, they are all about the relationship so they don't want to ruin that relationship with the borrower because they've got you know deposit, cash management, and they have these loans. And a lot of times there are millions of dollars associated yes. with the other assets and not necessarily the loan. Exactly, so they've had this loan for a long time and so it's, called, it's very well seasoned and so it's just no longer fitting their criteria. So, and for other reasons, there could be the, the use or the type or everything that they no longer want this loan on their So books. what do they do? What do they do? <laughs> well, they, most of the time they hold on to it and they just like struggle through it. Because they don't want to upset 
people, right? They don't right? want to set the bar where they but don't want to lose that. How do they fix it? Right. Well, we come in and we help them fix it. So we come in and we can um, advise them and guide them on how to get this off their books and how to bring both parties to the table, explain to the borrower what's happening and why this needs to occur, that it's not them, that they don't take this personally. And then we go to the market and we find someone else to buy this loan from the bank and step in as the new lender. And quite often we can do this with all parties involved and work out a solution so that's optimal for everybody. So it's not a surprise. Everybody knows what's going correct, on. Correct, correct. Now, sometimes it is a surprise. They're like, we don't want them to know. <laughs> yes, that happens. They're like, we don't want them to know. Go out to the market, do it under the radar, find someone else to take this loan off of our books. And we do that as well. And then there's other times where it's just not performing. They don't want to do, go through the foreclosure process. We go and find somebody who's going to take this loan and then foreclose on it or, or whatever. Sometimes they come in and they provide rescue capital for the borrower and there'll be like two loans or they'll recap it, but it'll be a completely different lender. It'll be and a different animal when it's It'll done. be there. And it's not necessarily a bank who does this. No. Yeah, there are private, private. investors yes. who do this, private equity firms, um, family offices, high net worth individuals, because it's just another form of real estate, another real estate, form of real estate investing. Which performs a lot better than leaving your money in the bank. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I mean, there's a little bit of risk in there, but with anything, you know, of great profit, there's always risk, risk involved. Risk reward. And so you, yes, risk reward. And so a lot of people don't realize that you can actually buy debt. You can buy loans from other... All day long. All day long. All day long. Yeah. Good, bad, or indifferent. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. And I mean, and different people buy loans for different reasons. And so we know those type of buyers. Um, you know, some of them, they want the cash flow. They want that cash flow that's due to them by this loan. Other ones want a different path to the, re to the real estate. To the reward. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Yes. So one of the things that was talked about in the guest audience Yes, is that do you come in in the planning process where we're looking at commercial real estate mm -hmm. or do you come in after we've got the commercial real estate? Where is your entry point in the, in the transaction? We're able to come in at pretty much any point. And, it's, and so this is what we do is when, when someone is referred to us, we sit down with them, we have a very long conversation, sometimes multiple conversations with maybe the point of contact and the other stakeholders in the transaction. So it's, it's, a lot, it's, it's like a little bit of planning, if you will, before we move forward. We wanna understand their goals and overall objectives with this wow. transaction. So we can come in at the very beginning we have a lot of first-time buyers, we have a lot of first-time investors, and we have a lot of first-time business owners. We work with small business owners to help them with their transactions. And also one of the comments that was made in regard to leasing. Okay, a lot of people don't see leases, commercial leases, as a real estate investment, but it is so, so important. When you buy real estate, you, you know, you buy the property, you're now the landlord, you're your own landlord, and that's that. It has its own separate set of benefits and drawbacks and things that you have to consider. But when you're leasing... Totally different animal. Totally different animal, totally different perspective, but has its own benefits. And it can get you in trouble big time. It can get you into huge trouble. And in some way, understanding leases, commercial leases, is so... Uh, it, it's almost more important in some ways as understanding a transaction, okay, a purchase or a sale, because you're dictating. One of the things I love is that when I went and, and leased my office, I was told, don't worry about it, it's a boilerplate lease. Yes, yes, right? yes, yes. How true is that statement? No. <laughs> <laughs> that is not true. I mean, you have, people just think this is all, what is presented is all I can do. And like the landlord presents the lease to you and that's that. I'm stuck with it. You're stuck with it. Not no, true. Not true. In leasing, just as in when you're purchasing, everything is negotiable. Everything is negotiable. So do yourself a favor. Find somebody who understands this 
and can negotiate on your behalf who represents you. Which would be you. That's exactly right. <laughs> which would be <laughs> us, which would be me, me and my partners and our staff and everything like that because we, we understand that. And so we want the tenant to go in, the client, the business owner, this is going to affect your business for the next three, five, seven years. And it's a relationship. So that's what we're helping you negotiate. We're helping you set the terms for this relationship that's going to have an impact on your business, on your ability to operate, to be profitable. What's gonna happen if something breaks down? Okay, you're a small business owner. Okay, you're just starting out. The last thing you wanna do is, pay 20, is to pay $25,000 to replace an HVAC system. Not really. I know, Don't exactly. Have. Where is that money gonna come from? You need to think about this in advance. Um, we just did a lease with a client, and I mean, sometimes it's the littlest things. They just failed their um, certificate of occupancy because the doors were not to code. They couldn't unlock the doors from the outside. But we negotiated in the lease what the landlord was going to be responsible for, and so we just immediately called the landlord. They hadn't even taken, you know, possess they hadn't even moved in yet, and the landlord has to come and replace those doors. Wow. Had they had to replace it, that would have been tens of thousands of dollars. Wow, yeah. wow, wow. Yeah, yeah. So it's just understanding these little things within the leases. Do you understand what you just said to every business owner out there? <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, in some respects, yes. So, if yeah. you don't understand what's in your lease right. and how it's structured, oh, yes, yes. You, you need to have somebody like Kathleen looking at that lease, looking for the problems, and figuring out what is missing in the lease. Yes. Not only what the lease says. Exactly. Right? Yes, exactly. Exactly. We have we have a client right now who was taking over the family business. The parents owned it. They were in the process of renewing, and the children wanted to come and take it over. Well, the landlord was like, oh, we've negotiated this great rate for you, for your parents, just take it over. And they had me look at it, and I was like, no, you're renewing at an above market rent. They're like, what? We're like, no, this is what the market is right now. They're telling you you've got a great rate. You're actually renewing and locking yourself in for the next four years at an above market rent to st start with, with stair steps. So we went back, we're like, this is what they're willing to do, and we got them a better rate than what their parents were even going to renew at. So because they, the parents didn't realize it. They're like, no, this is what the landlord said. And we're like, no, you can renegotiate a renewal. Even though it's written in your lease and it says you have a renewal, it can be negotiated. Call Kathleen. <laughs> we'll be right back. We're going to talk to our sponsors and then we're going to come back. Team building strategies and why they matter. Brought to you by Visions to Excellence. Be aware of how you work. As the leader of your team, you must be extremely aware of your leadership style and techniques. Get to know the rest of your team. Make sure you have invested the time to understand how they think and what is required to motivate them to excel beyond what is expected. Clearly define roles and responsibilities. Each of your team members' responsibilities must be interconnected and dependent upon one another. Give feedback. This should be proactive and constant. The key is communication. Acknowledge and reward. Being genuine in your recognition and respect goes a long way towards building loyalty and trust. To learn more, visit visionstoexcellence.com. Thanks for watching. This is the transaction you've been looking forward to. Your client is getting a great deal. It's time to go to the title company and sign the closing documents. Deadlines must be met for funding to happen so the buyer can get the keys. Call me, Lisa Harbell, at 469-914-2686 for quick underwriting decisions, in-house attorneys, and up-to-date technology to ensure an efficient closing. We're DFW's Secured Title of Texas Solution for 1031s, commercial properties, residential purchases, and equity loans, and more. A proper title search ensures taxes and mortgages have been paid, there are no judgments against the seller, and the restrictions are in line with planned use. 
Secured Title of Texas makes it easy for you to move forward with organized title experts who protect lenders and home buyers from liens and defects in title or actual ownership of the property. Call me, Lisa Harvell, with Secured Title of Texas at 469-914-2686. Get it done right, get it done on time, 469-914-2686. Welcome back. I'm Doreen Milano, and this is Kathleen Copeland. And Kathleen, how do our viewers get a hold of you? Well, you can get a hold of us several different ways. Obviously, we have a website. Um, I know one of the things that people struggle with is our name. Um, it is Versant, and that is spelled V as in Victor, E-R-S-A-N as in Nancy, T as in Tom. And our website is our name plus R-E-C, which stands for Real Estate Consulting. Dot com. And there you've got all of our contact information, our telephone numbers, our emails, and um, website. We are also on Instagram, uh, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Great information. Yeah. I think our audience learned a lot today. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, it's my pleasure. This it's was great. always a pleasure to sit across from you and talk. <laughs> thank you, Doreen. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, yeah, this was great. We're happy to help any way that we can. Yeah. Thank you so much, and we'll see you soon. Hey, Doreen Milano here. You already know the squeeze family businesses have in acquiring new talent. You could also be feeling that very same squeeze when it comes to growing your business and gaining new clients. What if I told you there was a way to become the employee of choice in your field? How would you like more cash flow, more clients who love you, and employees who feel great working with you and your clients? I've helped hundreds of family-owned businesses, just like yours, who are now reaping the benefits of plentiful cash flow, increased revenue in the millions, employees who love where they work, and loyal clients. I've spent over 30 years developing the tool chest and working in the corporate space, helping companies of all sizes attain maximum profitability. You are not wrong or at fault. The struggle in family business is very real. Your business needs more cash flow, more profits, more leads, and happy employees. Spending the last 12 years working with family businesses, I've been upgrading and proving that these strategies actually work. The system is based on several key strategic components around people, strategies, process, and profits. I'm sharing my strategies with the owners of family businesses who want an edge in today's challenging market without having to reinvent the wheel. If you want to know more, go to v2e.biz or give me a call at 650-483-5798.